Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about the domain of protection inside the protection environment of an operating system. How to implement this domain inside the protection of that operating system and its users. The what is the domain structure and what is the legitimate use of the domain and finally as an example of this domain structure we will illustrate the multics operating systems domain. All computer system can be comprised of two entities that is processes and objects. Now the objects can be considered as an hardware object which is say CPU, main memory or any peripheral devices and software objects like the file, list, data structures, device controllers, device drivers and all. So the objects must be unified between them by the unique name provided by the operating system. So the identification of each object by from is another and their descriptionally distinguishment is very important and crucial to the protection of that objects for the use of the users. Now the objects can be shared between every users or it can be protected for the private use of a users. And it depends on the operation that is a set of list of privileges that can be accessed by the user on that particular object. Say for an example that a file can be read, write, an executable code can only execute in the loaded memory area or an operation which can be created, opened, closed, executed, re-edited, edited and all. So there are many methods which can be operated in many ways. So we must first to specify that what are the operations that can be performed on an object by a process or a user. First we need to determine that the process is having what kind of operations on the user. So whenever a process requests for the user to resource, then to use that resource, first the resource is checked against that processes. If the process is allowed to use this resource, only then it can gain access that particular resource is used. Furthermore, we need to say that the process will gain access of this resource only if it is needed to complete its remaining task. So the second one gives us the idea of this need to know principle about the processes domain. So whenever the need to know principle is followed, we must say that the process will obtain only the resources if it is only needed to buy the process, not that the process is allowed to access that processes resources. Now these resources are maintained by an operating system list and associated with it the process access rights. First the process is checked again that resource, if it is allowed then it is checked that it is needed for that process or not. Now only after the need is established then only we can give those processes of the access to the resource. So in this way we can mean that the least privilege principle of protecting an environment inside the operating system. And we can do so by using this need to know principle of processes. So that is the particular protection environment that we should follow in that operating system architecture. So this need to know principle of processes will definitely give us a more idea that which faulty process has caused the problem in the environment. Say for an example, a process P called an impression procedure A inside its environment. Now the A can activate only its local variables and the arguments that are passed to it, not any other variables that is available to process P. In such a way, process P has called a compiler to compile an executable code. So the executable code must be of a predefined type that is a source code, a lines of code and so on. And in a vice versa, the compiler can also execute it by some processes that is defined to compilation process. So in this way, we are specifying that the need to know that which of the process is needed by the processes parameters only can be given that process access. So here we can know that which if the process is tried to access another invocation procedures function call or variable listing so that the process is just having the access rights domination. So in this way the protection of this accesses domination can be predefined and the domain can be structured in such a way. 
So first, the domain of the protection for every object and associated with every process can be a pair of the domain structure, which contains the resources as well as the operations that are performed and that are exercised on that particular objects. Say for example that a file is given a read-write object for a particular process. So the process that is acting on that domain can only have that read-write access on that particular file if. So if the process is having and belonging to a domain, then only the access rights that is mentioned within the domain for the resources that the process can access. So it is maintaining this list of privilege principle as well as the need to know principle inside this domain structure analysis. Say for an example, a process is having three domains like D1, D2 and D3. But D1 is having an object O1 and O2 read and execute method of access rights and on object O3 it has only execute access rights. Now in the domain D2, these having the read rights to object O2 and write rights to object O4. And also in D3, which has write rights to object O4, read rights to object O3 and execute rights on object O1. So we can say that the write right of the object O4 is shared between these domains D2 and D3. So here we can see that the domain can share preferences or access rights on objects. So either of these D2 and D3, if a process belongs, then it can write an object offer on that any of a domain. So the domain satisfaction can be either state or otherwise dynamic. If it is state or static, then we can say that the domain cannot be changed according to the priority. So for that, if a process needs to read an object in one phase and to write an object in another phase. So for a static domain structure, we need to give this access rights that is predetermined and all the access rights for the process at once. Then when the read access is done by the process, which also have the write access, and at the time of writing to the object, it also has a read object. But it is violating the need to know principle of a process domain structure. So this can be arrived in a protection aggregation while we can use that the process is having two more access rights than it should have an only one access rights. So in this way the protection in static become a little different from the domain in dynamic. While in the dynamic domain structure, we can switch between the domains like when for this example, a process can have read write on that object on a domain and write write of the object on another domain. So whenever the process is in phase one, it will be in domain one and when we be in phase two, it will be switched to domain two. So this switching in done is very, very obvious. In the first way, it is created to domain and recreate it on the changing requirements of the process. See if the process is now on the right phase, so it will be created the domain and recreate it on that right domain. Other than that, if it cannot recreate or reconstruct the domain, then it can generally create a new domain on the right phase and then switch it from the previous domain to the new domain. So in this way, domain switching is possible in the dynamic domain structuring. But as we know that the static domain is more simple than the dynamic domain, which is more complex, but it is most efficient because the dynamic switching of the domain can give us to validate the need to know principles of the process for protecting an environment. Now the domain can be realized in many of the ways. The first way to realize the domain is a user domain. Here each resource is checked again the user list or the user domain that the domain list is belonging to the user authentication. So first the resource is checked again the authentication. If the user is authenticated for access rights on that particular resources, then only the user will be invoked on that protection domain. And the domain switching is done when one user logs out and another user logs in. So that the domain is changing from one user to another. The next type of domain that is realized is this process domain. The process domain consists of the processes that can access the particular resource. And the process domain is passed and the domain which switching is done if a process sends messages to another process that now it can execute on that particular environment. 
and the third types of domain that can be realized is the procedure domain. Say that the difference between the process and procedure is procedure can be a part of a procedure or the phase of a process. So this procedure domain can be realized that the resource can be activated only inside that procedure. And domain switching is done when the procedure call is actually been held by some operating system user. So now that the arguments passed to it will be changing the requirements of the procedure. Say for an example, if we talk about the two domain factor like a monitor and the base user system. Here the monitor is used in the operating system mode where it can use all the privilege instructions and can have more domain principles. Rather when it is executing in the normal computer mode, we I mean have the user process execution mode and can have a little domain prescription. So this differentiate between the policies of the two domain that is one operating system another one user process. But some environment does not support only these two types of domain structure. It should have a more than type of domain structure. So now we will example taken multics and see illustrate this domain structure elaboratively. In the multics, the protection domains is generally hierarchically arranged in the type of a ring structure where each ring in the concentratic to the center has the most privileges and while it is moving out to the diameter of the ring, it has less privileges. So if the privileges are recording with i to j, the domain belonging to di has more privileges than the domain belonging to dj if and only if its j is greater than i. So as j is on the outer side and i is on the inner side because i is having more privileges and we are moving out that is why j is having less privileges than i. So if j is greater than i then di is have more privileges than dj. So in this way we can differentiate among the processes which is associated with each ring number that is the process can be executed on that particular domain to verify that which process can be executed. And domain switching is done that from one ring in this domain can be converted to another domain ring on that particular hierarchical structure. Now a process is attached with an associated ring number and this ring number can tell us that the process can be executed for a file on which particular domain. So if a matrix have only two rings in that domain, so we can say it acts as normal a monitor computer basis where the monitor is at the ring 0 and the computer is at the ring 1. And as we know the multix has this entities known as segments where each segment is a file and associated with each segment is the domain ring number. And along these ring numbers there is three bits for the read, write and execute on that file mode. So that it defines that which domain is associated with which modes of the file operation. Now for each process it has a domain ring num counter. This domain ring counter number specifies that the process is having a domain on which ring number. That is if a process have i domain number and the ring number then we can say that the di is a process for pi. And it can only belong to pi if it is having an j less than equals to i. So if it is j less than equals to i the process belonging to pi cannot access to the process belonging to pj because the pj is having more access rights. However that ij if less than equals to k that means that it can access all the access rights of k because it is having a higher integer number. So while we are moving out we can access rights of that inner number but while we are moving in we can access the inner numbers but not the outer numbers. So in this way domain switching is done in a more controllable and efficient way. Otherwise all process could be start at domain 0 with every privileges that would have been given to it. So this ring structure does not support that the need to know principal privileges. As the process can be switched from any domain to any domain at every time, so we can say that the process will have only the access right that is needed for that particular phase is not maintained by this particular multix ring structure. Now along with each ring there are three data structure that it should maintain. The first is the accreditation brackets. It includes two integer number b1 and b2 that is b1 is less than equals to b2. Now is that the limit. 
The limit is having an integer number b3 such that that b2 is less than b3. That b3 is a final limit and more than it cannot be converted. And finally is a list that is an entry or the list of the gates or the entry points where the switching can be done or one domain can be changed to another domain. So say if a process i is belonging to a process p domain, then we can say that i is less than equals to b3 but greater than equals to b2 can only be accessed the domain switching possible. The three scenarios that can happen that if i is less than equals to b1, then we can say it is having a minimum number of limit that b1. So b1 is the final concentric cell and so it will trap the operating system this type of error because i is not belonging to the ring numbers. But however it can then allow to operate if it can transfer from i to b1 that time and switching are possible. Next type of belonging to done is the i is less than equals to b2. If i is less than equals to b2 then normal operation can be performed on i as it belongs to the ring numbers. The third is i is greater than equals to b2. That is i belongs to the normal limit number or the accredited brackets. Here the process will be allowed to operate if and only if i is less than equals to b3. That is the final limit on the ring structure. Other than that it will again trap back to the operating system. So these data structures are maintained so that the need to know principle can be maintained in the multics architecture in a possible and efficient way. As we know that the multics information of this ring structure does not belong to the need to know principle because the higher level can access all the lower level access privilege rights because it has the privilege rights of itself domain and plus the domain of the inner level. Now it is more complex and less efficient because the access rights in that domain structure can be switched on every time the process needs to get to change its phase. So this multics operating system protection is not at a higher level and can be changed by any other architecture it follows. So this similar type of this protection cannot support the number crunching that is supported by your operating system with a higher level of protecting measure other than using this ring level domain structure. So the ring level domain structure is definitely good for domain switching or dynamic domain switching but it is expensive and complex to apply and it is also less efficient because of these complexities. So that is all for the domain structure and the multi domain structure example. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.